is something you may find interesting, and I hope you find interesting. In music and in life, when we study history, and even in music, the idea of race always comes in. And here's where it comes in in the creation of jazz. These concepts here. Louisiana is where New Orleans is. New Orleans was a French colony. They had a different code of dealing with race. In most of the rest of the United States, if you had one drop of black blood in you, you were considered black. If you were one sixty-fourth black, you were considered black. And that meant that you were a second-class citizen. That meant a lot of things, that you couldn't, you couldn't own property. It meant that you couldn't vote. It meant that you could not marry someone of the other race. It meant that you were probably not free on so many levels. Jim Crow are the rules of laws that, that legislated that amongst people. In New Orleans, it was a little different. Theirs was a little more complicated. They had more categories than, than that in terms of black and white. Okay, And I don't want to exclude anyone who doesn't feel they fit in that, category, in that category. Maybe you're Asian or Latin American, you're saying, what are you talking about? But I am talking about African American music, and in this time, that was the conversation, black or white. So here, okay, they had different rules. They said, well, no, we've got a more complex structure than just black or white. We've got, the way we deal with it is, at the top of the pyramid, in terms of who's in control, is what color? At that time, what color? White. White. Right. And these men were slaveholders. Okay? The next one, based on how much blood you had, would have been the octoroon. That meant they were one eighth black. Okay? The next one in the pyramid, with different set of rights and different rules, would have been quadroon. Meaning what? Quarter or fourth. Quarter or fourth. Black. And this word is politically incorrect, but it is the word that is used in the history books. Malabo. We don't, we don't use that word nowadays, but it means a person who is mixed, or in this case, half. Okay? So the person who was half was near the bottom. And who was on the very bottom of this structure? The person who was not mixed at all, who was all black. So the way that relates to jazz is these people had rights. They were limited and they were second-class citizens, but they could be educated. Like the Octoroon, for example, some men, some men, and this is just terrible to me, but some men, were allowed, white men, were allowed to have a Quadroon girlfriend, and they had Octoroon babies. Now, Octoroon, I'm sorry, the other way around, but Octoroon could go to be educated. Wait, and the quadrant to be educated. They could be educated. Whereas the person, black person in the bottom could not be educated. It was against the law to teach a black person to read. Against the law. Okay? So, in this culture of New Orleans that was compli complicated, you had this is called Creole, this whole arrangement here. It's Creole culture. A lot of the Creole people of color were taught European harmony and music, which the system that we study today in music is European. We learn European music and harmony. And primarily, almost all instruments we use are European instruments. So what happened was in 1894, in Storyville, 1894, a law was passed that said, took away all of their rights took away all the rights. And they said, 1894, okay, you are, you are all black now. Okay, you're all black. So go live with each other. And so they had to live segregated together. So for the first time, blacks and the, and the Creole culture mixed together. And when they mixed together, this is how it comes to jazz. When they mixed together, a new explosion, it was like an atomic fission, atomic fusion. These atoms went and they created something it couldn't have happened in Philadelphia. It couldn't have happened in any other city. It couldn't have happened in Chicago. But New Orleans had happened. And it gave the world jazz and all kinds of other jazz. Don't you think that's an interest, interesting way how culture 
can affect, and even how laws can affect music. I find it interesting. And I, and I, I hope you do too. So, New Orleans, this is the first style of jazz. It's called Dixieland or New Orleans jazz. Okay? And there's different, there's Chicago Dixieland. And that leads us to swing, which leads us to Duke Ellington. And Duke was one of the greatest musicians ever. Over 20,000 performances he did. And if we had, had time, we could do the math and see how many that is a year for over like uh, 50 plus years, 55 years. He wrote 2,000 pieces of music. <clears throat> Very important band members, and I'm gonna, we're gonna listen, we're gonna watch this little video until we run out of time, okay? This is a video from a movie called Cabin in the Sky, and I just wanted to show it to you because it shows you how cool the dancing was, how cool the dancing was, and how good the band is. 